Welcome back. Now we've gone over a few SQL commands and you should feel pretty comfortable with most of them. But there's one thing that I've kind of omitted until now. You remember here when we spoke about relational databases, I mentioned something about a primary key and a foreign key. How these tables are linked with one another with some values like username. Well, we're going to start introducing this idea of connecting the tables and how we can do that. The first thing I want to show you is this command right here. I want to create a login table with create table, which we've seen. And now within here, I have a few things. I have an ID that has data type serial. Let's look at what that is. We see that the data type serial is an auto incrementing integer value. Okay. And this auto incremented value, every time a new user is created, it'll go one, two, three, four, five. So it's a unique ID that we can assign to each user. However, this is for the login table. So that is, we're creating an ID for each login entry here. And you see that it says not null. Not null means that this, well, has to be a filled in property. Remember when we had the users table and we didn't have the scores and we had null here? Well, if we do not null, that means that that's not possible. And then we also have primary key. And setting primary keys when you're creating a table is one of the most important things. By saying that the ID here is the primary key, it's saying that this is what I want you to access when I'm looking for things. And databases are really, really good when you set a primary key to grab this information. And as you know, primary keys are only one per table, usually something like an ID or something unique like an email. By setting this as primary key, we now have a really, really fast way of selecting or grabbing information. If we look at the second value here, the second column, we have secret, which is a variable character of 100. Let's look at what that data type is. For the string data type, variable character has a size. And we can say the numeric characters to store. So we're saying that the secret value, in our case, this will be the hash, will not be greater than 100. And it also is not null. That is, this always has to be filled when we're inserting something into this table. Otherwise, it's going to fail. And then we have name, which will be text that we've used before, but it also has to be unique. And the unique keyword says that if a name already exists, well, then we can't insert into it. So let's run this command and see what happens. Let's refresh. We have the login table now with ID, secret, and name. Let's enter some information in here. I'm going to say insert into login. We don't need to now insert anything in the ID because that's actually done for us. Because it's serial, it'll just automatically increment. But for the secret, we can say that secret will be a hash and the name will be some sort of a text. Let's format this a little bit. Values, and we'll say some sort of a string. We'll just say ABC here. And the name will be Andre. Let's run the query. Let's go back to the login, refresh, go to login, and we see that Andre has been inserted with ID of one. If I go back to the query and add a different person, let's do Sally, and her password is XYZ. Run the query, 
and now she should be in there. And you also notice that her ID is now two. What if I enter this again? I get an error, duplicate key value, violates unique constraint, login name key, because we've said that we want unique for name. Very cool. Let's enter the last one, and this will be John, because that's what we have in our users table. So we have John, perfect. And if we go to login, we also have John with his secret, which is LOL. And notice here that it's four instead of three because we ran a command, but we failed to do this. But it doesn't really matter because as long as these are unique, these are the primary keys. This is the one thing that we make sure that is unique at all times in our table. But by doing this, we've created something interesting. We have Andre, Sally, and John that also live with Andre, Sally, and John in the users table. When we design databases like this, we can now have Andre, Sally, and John referencing the users. And if I wanted to grab Andre or Andre's secret, which is ABC, in that case, I have a foreign key, which is this, this name column in the login is the foreign key that references the, in our case, the primary key here, because these are the unique identifying values in the users table, that is Andre. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how we can finally connect these two together. I'll see you in that one. Bye-bye.